Sunflower harvest is upon us. So here's a sunflower head. These are high oleic sunflowers. And if you take a look at them, they're not like the baseball seed kinds. They're high oleic. So they're usually for oil or foods, different things like that. You can see they're a little different, a little more charcoal color to them. So if you look at a sunflower seed, you can see that that's the pointy end there. So the pointy end actually goes facing down. Fun fact, not out. Save him for later. Welcome to the Red River Valley of North Dakota. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're watching Beet Farmin' Mitch. So this is a 35 foot Case IH Terraflex header, but it's converted to a sunflower header. You know sunflowers, you see all kinds of stuff with sunflowers. Sometimes people make their own completely new sunflower header, and sometimes a lot of people make these homemade type things. Like that one on our 2388, that is like an old wheat header converted to a sunflower header. Same thing with this one, except this one's got like a new kit on it, the seed eater kit. And so this is a new header to us, and the sunflower part's brand new, not the header part, that's used. But anyway, I just started running this thing yesterday, no, two days ago, and we were running with this, and I was going in the dark one night with the ditch, and I tickled some dirt with this point right here, and basically this whole divider just got sucked under the header. And it did that because I saw this side had a little bit of a bounce to it. That side was a little more solid and I should have checked it out, but it was a brand new header. So I didn't think anything was too wrong with it, but there's a bracket up there and that bracket was broken. And so there was a little play in there. So as soon as this touched the ground, it just boom, got sucked under. Long story short, I had to go to Jamestown at 5.30 in the morning, got there at eight on a whim. This, is, this was our plan and then turns out they didn't have the parts. So there's the old one, you can see it's all mashed up, but guess what? We got a new one, we got the last one they had. Guy said, yeah, we don't have the parts, sorry. But he looked again in the part book, and the part number for the left and the right divider was the same number, so it turns out they had one. So we ended up getting the parts we needed, a blessing from the Lord, and then got all the parts back, got back yesterday, fixed her up, and started going, and man, this thing eats some seed. And another thing that happened was these sunflower pans are faced down so far, so I could hardly see them. I mean, my head was up in the top of the cab up there when I was going, and I could barely see the tips from in here. And it turns out we needed to adjust our feeder house face plate so that our sunflower header was running a little bit more level. So lots of configuring, but we got her figured out and dialed in now. So the face plate bolts are right on the side of the feeder house here. You can see where they were set, and then it got slid all the way forward. So we got that face plate tilted there, so there's a little better angle on the header. And this is the bracket that was broken here. But we got her dialed in now, and there were combining sunflowers, and so that that's good. I was like, when I saw that divider get sucked under when I was combining, like I just ruined the new header, but there was other faults at play. So fun fact, sunflowers are major fire hazard for combines. They are combine killers, basically. So every day and multiple times a day, I got to check up here and in the mornings, I'm going to blow out and I'm thinking maybe midday will blow out today, but you can see all this on here. That stuff, it builds up in places like this and it gets hot and it starts little ember fires and then that can blow, burn your whole combine down. So I'm going to blow this off with the air hose and clean the engine off good. Got my camera dirty. Especially like this too on the exhaust, all that stuff stuck on there. So if you think a harvested cornfield smells good or a harvested sugar beet field, they do. There's nothing like the smell of a harvested sunflower field. It's honestly, it smells like a Thanksgiving dinner. Just savory, like sage stuffing or something. It's just, it's delicious. So I'm gonna finish blowing this off and we'll start combining.
So here we go, combine and sunflowers. Going anywhere from 4.2 to 4.5 miles an hour and sunflowers are finicky. They really, you really gotta dial in your sieves and your fan and stuff to get them cleaned appropriately. They say that you want your FM, your foreign material, meaning stuff that isn't sunflower seed, in your sunflowers over 5%. And yesterday I was combining a little too clean. I think we were anywhere from two to five. And so I opened up sieves and turned my fan down a little bit. So I'm running my fan, 750, my sieves, top sieve 17, bottom sieve 15. And we're, we're letting it rip. So you can see it looks like there's a lot of junk in there, but really, I mean, you don't want these sunflower seeds blowing out the back. They're so light. So that's the reasoning behind that. So yeah, like I said, this is a homemade Jimmy Rig sunflower header and I'm running on GPS. This is super nice. It's a 35 foot header run on auto steer. I gotta adjust my height all the time. You know, like I said, we have that bracket broken up there. How it broke, I don't know. Was it broken when we got it? I'm not sure. It was broken when I started combining with it. And basically it just barely touched the ground with the bottom of that thing. And it should be able to handle just a nick and just sucked under. So that's the sad part. That's why I had to go to Jamestown. But yeah, this field's got mile long rounds on it. So it goes pretty slow, but you know, we're keeping the combine going and keeping the flowers running through. So I've got my drum. That's the goofy spiky looking thing spinning there. I got it running pretty slow. Cause you can see here, I got a kind of a pile built up. I was kicking a few more up earlier seems like now we're doing a little bit better. I don't want to be, I don't want to be losing them off the back over there. So I got it running pretty low. Basically the idea is that those pans, as long as they don't plug and those are just kind of pulling them through, then we're in good shape. Uh oh. Yeah, you fill up pretty fast with sunflowers. It doesn't take long for the sunflowers to spill into here. So you can see the rows here. We planted them in 22 inch rows going that way. And I am combining at a five degree angle. I've got auto steer. We're doing that because this one, the divider was kind of knocking some down. I tried going with the rows right when we got this header and it just was not working that great. And so yeah, going at an angle now and it seems pretty good. And yeah, I'm constantly kind of adjusting my height, floating it up and down. Right now I'm going through a little taller patch of flowers. You can see they're wrapping around a little bit there. So that's why I'm cutting a little bit higher, but I don't want heads slipping under. And then when I get to shorter ones, of course I'll drop it down, but I don't want to hit the ground with those sunflower pans there. But yeah, before we adjusted the feeder house, I could not see the tips of those pans very good. I basically had to have my head way up here at the top of the cab to see it versus like a normal spot. Now I can see them. And yeah, we should be functioning, functioning well now. So my dad's running the other 2388 over there. Our other 2388, we're just not running. That's our other one we're thinking might sell that thing just because it's it's getting to be kind of not worth it to run it anymore. It just, we have too much going on with these other ones. We got Jason coming down. We got a new opening here I just made. And I made a little path for him, carved a passageway so he can sneak over to my dad on that other side. So we'll let him pass by here. And then, Put my auger out. You don't want to high five augers. It would not be good. Great on time. It's just, it's crazy seeing such like a black, dark crop coming out of the auger. It's kind of cool, just jet black. But yeah, I think we got the header and the combine dialed in where we want it to be. But you know, it's never fully sanctified. And so I'm a Christian, so sanctification is basically when you come to know Christ, the process, the journey. You know, Christians, we aren't perfect. But that doesn't mean we live with a free license of sin. You know, the book of Jude in the Bible talks about how we shouldn't live and do whatever we want willy-nilly because God will forgive us. No, we don't want to do that because we love God and He loves us. You know, on our Christian walk, we make many mistakes and things throughout life. And, you know, if we turn to the Lord, and He's faithful to forgive us. But anyway, um, 
you know, they're always nudging, you're always moving. And so with farming, it's the same thing. You're always adjusting the combine, so to speak. You might have a little too much FM in the hopper, so what do you gotta do? Well, you might need to drop your fan speed. Well, if you got too much FM, you might need to turn your fan speed up. You might need to open your sips a little bit. You know, and such it is with life and following the Lord. So there you go, there's today's little parable of farming to being a Christian. So you can see this is a harvested sunflower head. You can see all the seeds missing, but you can see the head is still whole. It's not busted up. That's kind of what you want to see. You want to see those whole things coming out the back of the combine, not chunks like this. I mean, you're going to get some that break up, but you kind of want those big ones frisbeeing out the back. Here they be. So you can see these kind of bare patches in here. These are alkali patches, meaning the salts in the soil are a little higher. The alkali in this field, this is probably our most alkali field. And so sunflowers can handle it better, but even, even sunflowers, you can see, can't grow everywhere in the alkali. But if we would have had like pinto beans here or something, they would have, there would have been big gaps in here. So at least there's something growing here. Hello. Drive into the field and stay out of the big stocks. There should be kind of enough smack down area. Look who it is. Check out what she's got. All kinds of goodies here. A good farm wife. You want some more? Huh? You want some more? We have a whole nother pizza. I'm taking three. Wait for the year. Cart master, how's hey, it going? Pretty good. Yeah. Ready to be done. Yeah, how <laughs> much we got left? Much. Not much. We're getting down there. Let's hit it, huh? Let's do it. Thank you for bringing pizza, out, Jenny. I think we all <laughs> appreciated that. It's fun to kind of celebrate because we're on our second to last field. My last field is just a little piece, so it's it hit the spot. That's for sure. We're all ready for it to be done. Hey, Amen. It's gonna get cold and it's gonna get snowy soon, so let's get the rest of the crop off. But Jenny, yeah, are you ready for this sacred moment? What is this? This is one of moment? the most sacred moments in a farmer's day. <gasps> the lights! Okay, I need you to walk me through this process. Yes, while I'm turning around on the headland, go back the other way. So I'm gonna be coming into my rows here while it's my GPS. Oh, there's a train in the dark. Can you see it? All the reflectors. That's kind of cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, but there's right no like, lights. There. So anyway, I come up to where my spot is, flip my header on. Header on. Get oh. lined up pretty close. Okay. There's this little button on my multi-function handle. Multi-function the handle. Ding. That's the auto steer oh. button. And then I just kind of have to move my header up and down to the appropriate height. I usually try to cut like from the ground like 30% up the way to the sunflower stock. So just to make sure I'm getting all the heads and cutting low enough but not too low either. If they're really short, I gotta be way down there as we saw earlier. But that's kind of how that function works. And this is the first year I've driven with having a combine with auto steer. And it's pretty nice to be able to have auto steer. I can watch the header and so many more other things while I'm going. What speed did you say you're at? Uh, I'm going 4 right now, but I should kick that up to 4.2. I've been going about 4.2. Yesterday we were on not quite as good of a field, so I was at 4.5. But 4.2, I want to make sure the combine can process everything over the sibs. And, you know, that's, I think that seems like about the right speed here. It's not too crazy. And it's dark now, so I don't want to slam this thing into the ground when it's dark. So. I'd rather go a tiny bit slower and make sure that doesn't happen. This is the first time that I have seen sunflowers harvested, so I'm not as familiar with it. So I usually have driven by fields and I've seen the pretty sunflowers where you take pictures, but I've never been in the combine harvesting sunflowers. So Michael, what are these sunflowers going to be used for? Um, these are going to be used for oil production primarily. It also goes to some food production and maybe some of the small rejects go to bird seed. But so not the sunflower seeds that you chew on at a ball game? No, not, not those are called confections. Those are different, but people do grow those in North Dakota as well and around here. 
Well, it's about 7.30 p.m. and it feels like 11.30. That's the truth. Right <laughs> it's there. dark out. Yeah. What is the most interesting thing you found in the field? Well, I just had my friend from Alaska here and we were straight combining pinto beans. And where was it? Oh yeah, we were servicing combines and it was smashed in the ground. And it was an old roundway with a hook on it. Super old antique thing. That was pretty unique, that was pretty recent. But this one wasn't for me, but my dad, he lost a crowbar in the field many, 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 many years ago, like decades ago. I don't remember how long. And then he found it like years later. That was a few years ago he found that, but that was kind of interesting. I thought that was kind of crazy. Find old parts and, you know, just random stuff, I guess. Random chunks of metal, I'd say, are pretty common. So we're curious about the most interesting things you guys have found in your field. So please comment below and share your stories. Well, we've got one little nub left here. And then we're done harvesting tonight. So we're gonna finish this field and then we got one tiny little chunk left tomorrow. That'll be it for sunflowers. And as a matter of fact, that'll be it for harvest. This is Bead Farm and Jenny. And this is Bead Farm and Mitch. And don't forget to keep, keep it sweet. sweet. Folks, this is it. 2022 harvest is complete right there.